I recently talked about great games from the 90s that offered me stupendous value for money based upon hours played. I chose to omit commercial games featuring a certain game mode from that list because you could technically play these games indefinitely. This list is about them. By that I mean any title that can procedurally generate levels or maps for the player to enjoy. It's why people are still playing Rogue and its roguelike descendants over 40 years since its inception. The idea has staying power and has got increasingly popular over the past 10 to 15 years in particular. As for this list, I'm only including games from the 90s that can be bought on digital storefronts, which limits things significantly. So apologies in advance to Civilization 1 and 2, which you absolutely should play, but for some reason they're still not available to purchase. You'll spot a pattern with a lot of these titles genre-wise. So now that the rambling's out of the way, let's get to the good stuff in chronological order. SimCity 2000 Reticulating Splines! Will Wright's city building masterpiece randomly generated the ground, which you had to construct your sprawling metropolis atop of. While the basics of city construction and maintenance remained the same satisfying gameplay loop, the environment within which you were tasked to plan and produce this differed greatly. While there was a series of city scenarios with goals to complete, you could completely ignore this and play an infinite procedurally generated sandbox mode for as long as you wanted. Master of Magic The first and not the last entry in a series of 4x games to this list, which stands for Explore, Expand, Exploit and Exterminate. A very particular and popular niche of usually turn-based strategy that lends itself to random map generation. In Master of Magic you're a wizard pitted against other wizards on a map to see who will become the most powerful wizards of all the wizards who ever practiced wizardry. And unlike SimCity, this game has an end. But because every time you play is different, you can start all over again. XCOM UFO Defense When talk of procedural generation hits the internet, the far more recent XCOM 2 is mentioned the rebooted series from Veraxis that did very well for itself. But to a group of hardcore fans, the original will always be the best, and it used an aggregated set of prefabricated terrain patches for the landing sites of your team. This adds another layer to the already ruthless turn-based strategy, as you never know if you were sending off your soldiers to die a horrible death, or simply into a mild case of fighting for their lives. XCOM is hard. Sid Meier's Colonization I'll never understand the legal ins and outs that somehow resulted in Sid Meier's Colonization being available for purchase, but not Sid Meier's Civilization. Since a large chunk of the teams overlap in those early Civ games in this one, you're given the choice at the beginning to choose between colonizing the historically accurate America's map or the New World, which is a randomly generated map allowing for infinite replay value. Like all good 4x games, colonization offers different modifiers that provide even more random elements to creep into your game, which is why people are still playing it today. Ancient Domains of Mystery Thomas Biscop's ADOM has been free to play since forever, but there's a nice graphical version should you want to financially reimburse him now. The general plot of the game, something that isn't commonplace in roguelikes, is kept intact, but everything else about the world is randomised with each permadeath playthrough. So it's familiar but different. You learn the game's mechanics, but the world you inhabit changes with your character. There are many roguelikes that operate this way, but most of the older ones don't have a paid option these days. If not owning it on a digital distribution platform isn't a problem, and you like this sort of game, there's endless content. Master of Orion 2 Randomly generated terrain? That's old hat. Wizards fighting each other? I think not. Instead, we have an entire galaxy of planets generated at random for alien empires to fight over, as the shadow of something even greater looms in the distance. Classic sci-fi stuff, and because of all that 4x flexibility, it's infinitely replayable. You can even build custom ships with different parts. So enjoy the last gasp release of the mighty Simtex, who also developed Master of Magic, Diablo. Finding out that Diablo had roots in the roguelike and could procedurally generate maps on the fly left me with one very important question. 
Why didn't Blizzard implement this into Warcraft or Starcraft? This isometric dungeon crawler wasn't entirely random. There were set parts of specific dungeons and the main town which remained the same throughout playthroughs, but everything else, right down to the treasure and weapons, was generated by algorithms that differed with each playthrough. While the gameplay was refined for later titles, this particular randomised masterwork comes from a time where Blizzard could do no wrong. Age of Empires 2 I've talked about this historical masterwork endlessly. If a single player campaign lasting hundreds of hours and an active multiplayer scene wasn't enough for you, Age of Empires 2 also had a random map generator in its skirmish mode, something that many other RTS titles of the time lacked. This might be due to the series having its roots in 4X games, but the result is infinite RTS content. Unsurprisingly, that is something I can get behind. Alpha Centauri Imagine Civilization 2 in space with a better plot, and make it actually available for purchase. That's right, it's yet another 4X game, and the first great one from Sid Meier's Firaxis. You make landfall, presumably after the end of Civ 2, on a strange and hostile alien planet, and compete against other members of humanity who had the same idea. The planet can be randomly generated, just like all the other Civ games, for infinite content. Worms Armageddon It's not 4X, it's not a sim, and though it requires a lot of real-time strategy, it's no RTS. Like Scorched Earth meets Lemmings, you're in control of a team of worms, and there's another team of worms also on the map. Destroy them! The great thing about these maps is that they can be randomly generated, so you'll never run out of worms to annihilate with a hilarious arsenal of weaponry. That's why it's still actively being played as of 2021, because it's still the best at doing that.